These are basically our receiving drills that we do. They're real quick, they're real simple, they're not rocket science. So this first thing that we're going to do, I'm just short hopping the ball, bare hand. And I'm getting the catcher to work on working the ball back up to the top of the, or just above the bottom of the strike zone. So as the ball's coming up, he's absorbing it. All right, go ahead. Go back. These are real simple. We're not that smart. We just found something that worked. All right, any questions on that? And you notice he's on a knee. Most of the drill work we do is on one knee, okay? Working on the bottom of the strike zone. So this would be something that you not only do in practice, but if you're taking your starting catcher out for the game, before the starting pitcher comes out, it would be a really good little warm-up for him before he goes into regular bare hand receiving. All right, the rest of these receiving drills you would not do before the game. This is a pre-game or practice drill. The next ones I'm going to show you would not be something you do before the game because you wouldn't have time. All right, go ahead. So this one here, this is the best drill that I have found for guys who struggle catching somebody who's throwing really hard. And I'm sure all of you guys have some pitchers that throw a little bit harder than others, and the catcher looks like scared, gun shy, he doesn't like he's able to catch the ball cleanly. Typically, we'd have a big hack attack. And if you crank that thing all the way up, I think it goes up. On the radar gun, it says like 99, but with the spin rate, it's actually closer to 110. So what we would do is set it on the highest spin or the highest velocity. And you notice the screen in front of the catcher. Okay, you get that screen as close to the catcher as you can. Crank that thing up as fast as you can get it going. Now it takes all the anxiety away from the catcher. Why? He ain't gonna catch the ball. It's gonna hit that screen before it gets to him. Okay. And what it allows them to do is start to take a deep breath, like after maybe three or four minutes, like, oh, I can really catch that. They just start to get more relaxed. They track the ball better. Now, I don't think they could catch it, but in their mind they can. You take the screen out of the way, slow it down a little bit. It just gets them used to seeing velocity. Okay? This is a great drill for young catchers right here. All right, go to the next one. All right, hold on a second. Hold on. So this is the kind of glove Coach Hill used back in 1935 when he was playing in high school. The no, no break glove. Oh, sorry. The no break glove. The old pancake glove. All right, this is what I actually was taught to catch with. And uh, this is the kind of glove that like Yogi Bear and all those guys used back in the day. It's basically a pancake mitt made by All Star. Okay? We use this for teaching absorption. And what I mean by absorption, what we talked about earlier, not sticking the ball. So if you're doing this drill right, the ball should drop straight down. Okay, the ball, sometimes the ball stick in the glove, but it shouldn't. So you'll notice here, if he's in the right position, he'll go slightly above, hand flat, and he absorbs it, the ball will drop right in front of him. If he's pushing through it, trying to stick it, the ball's going to come back towards the mouth. My son was fired up and he got to do these. You want to get them really good. All right, we, we all good on that one? Uh, this one here is a 35, but if we were doing, if you're out on the field and you have a big hack attack, set it probably 55 feet, so where it's like an extension where the ball would actually come out, and put a little angle on it, don't put it directly in front of the plate, so like offset it a little bit so it's got some angle, <coughs> like a right handed, and you can switch it to the left hand. Okay, the last receiving drill, and these are all the drills we do, okay? Glove on the ground to give us that feeling of working up underneath the ball. All right. These are all really simple. And when we're doing these, really all we're looking for is elbow positioning, the ability to move the baseball back to center, and presenting the ball with a flat hand. And you'll notice too, guys who roll over, we're trying to avoid, typically they close the glove with these fingers. And you can try it. Close the glove with these fingers, you're going to roll over top. Close the glove with these fingers, you stay flat. Okay, so we're trying to catch the ball with these fingers. All right, next one. So that's all the receiving. They're real simple. <coughs> so for our blocking drills, this will be part of your pregame. Okay, I just showed, I took one rep of each. When, we're do, when you're doing these, you can do four to five of each and then move on. So the first blocking drill we do, both these hips are up. Okay, all we're working on is absorbing the baseball, getting the glove to the ground, sinking our hips, getting the shoulders over. Can you play it one more time? 
And then you're, when you're rolling, it puts something on it. Right, as soon as we get done with that, four or five reps, we're going to go to the next one. Same position, just going to add a bounce. Do it again. One more time. Okay, so those are the first two blocking drills. Like I said, you can do these pre-game. Just monitor how many reps you do. As soon as we get done with both these, we go to our secondary setup. We're going to do rolls right down the middle. All right. Same thing, we're working on sinking the hips, glove to the ground, getting over the glove with the shoulders. All right, as soon as we finish those, we're going to do a three or three to five to our right with a roll, just working on the ankle. All right, we go to the right, obviously we're going to go to the left. After we do all of our rolls, we go right back to the beginning where we're in our secondary setup with a balance. Trying to control the baseball. Now, as silly as it sounds, if you're the person feeding it, when you're rolling it, put something on it, and when you're throwing this, just a nice little short hop, you got to be able to control the throw. But your catchers can actually do these together. They're really easy. All right, now we're going to go to the right. <coughs> then we'll finish up going to the left. And after we do this one now, regular secondary, or so that's all of them. Throwing drills, okay? We don't spend a lot of time throwing. And when we do practice throwing, typically we throw about 60 feet, maybe 65 feet, but somebody right behind you now. So this will be pregame as well. I'm going to start ball in the glove, set up with four seams so that when I throw, I can see the spin on the ball, make sure it's staying true. These are real simple. Maybe four to five where you're standing up. Just working on the exchange. Okay, after we do that, we progress to our secondary. Four to five of these. Okay, once we finish those two, glove comes off. Now we're going to go roll glove side. On this one here, all you're looking at is making sure that when he exchanges, he's direct here and he's not swinging like he's getting out around hugging a tree or something. It's just palm up, direct, take it out in the center, separate. Then you go right to backhand. This also forces them to weight on the ball and stay back, stay on their legs. After the two rolls, we're going to add a bounce to the glove side, simulate a breaking ball. Bounce to the backhand. And then after that, just do it with something firm, glove on. So literally, you can use that for your practice, or you can use that for pregame. And for pregame or practice, just set somebody in front of the mound, behind the mound. Pitching coach can do it, teammate can do it. They're real simple. These are literally the drills we do in spring training with the big league guys and the minor league guys. We do some, oh, we'll give you one more blocking drill that's really cool. If you have access to a hack attack, not the big one, but the small one. I guess you can do it with the paper, but someone might get hurt. For blocking drills, set on a breaking ball, the regular baseball, for a strike. So they're receiving the regular baseball. Maybe right-handed slider, right-handed curveball. And then if you can get some of the cloth and credit balls, and maybe some of you guys have already done this, just randomly mix one in. And because it's soft, it won't come out the same velocity or the same distance. It's going to bounce in front of the plate, so now it becomes a block. So you're trying to randomize the practice. Okay, so it's breaking ball strike, breaking ball strike, oh guy got blocked. Don't be so concerned about them actually blocking the ball and keeping it in front because those incredible balls bounce off pretty hard. Just make sure they're making the right read. Also, if you're really good with the fungo, stand in front of a mound, one hop with some fungos. Not real hard, but because of the randomization of it, they don't know if it's going to be in front, right, or left. It makes them have to make a decision to be athletic. Okay? Did I make it in an hour? No. I did. <laughs> One hour, seven minutes. <laughs> All right. Guys, thanks for your attention. I appreciate it.